Good evening, my dear 9th standard students. In the previous video, we have derived the equations of motion by mathematical method or analytical method. Now we will join with a new topic that is graphical study of the motion of different bodies. The first graph in the equations of motion to be studied is the distance time graph or ST graph. It is also called as the displacement versus time graph because when a body moves along a straight line, the distance is also equal to its displacement. Now, in this graph, the time taken by the body is taken along the x-axis and the distance or displacement of the body is taken along the y-axis. The time is represented in seconds and the distance or displacement is represented in meter. Now, from the first graph, we find that uh, it is a straight line passing through the origin. The straight line passing through the origin. So, this type of graph, uh, you see, for example, after one second, after one second, say, for example, 5 meter is covered by the body. Then after 2 seconds, 10 meter. After 3 seconds, 15. After 4 seconds, it is 20 meter. Like that, uh, at regular intervals of time, equal distances are covered or equal displacements are being covered. So, this type of motion indicates that equal displacements are covered in equal intervals of time or equal distances are covered in equal intervals of time and hence, the body must have a uniform speed. If it is a displacement versus time graph means it can also be called as a uniform velocity if the body moves along a straight line. Now, you take the second curve, the second graph. So, in this graph, the shape of the graph is not a straight line, but it is a curved line. Is it not? So, definitely, the speed and the velocity of the body should not be uniform. How? Let us see. For example, after one second, after one second, you see the distance of the body is less than 5 meters. After 2 seconds, it is equal to 5 meters. Then after 3 seconds, it is nearly equal to 10. Then after 4 seconds, it is less than 15 meter. Then after 5 seconds, you see that after 5 seconds, after 5 seconds, it is equal to 20 meter. So in this case, a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time. So the speed of the body is said to be non-uniform. Are you all understanding? What is the difference between the first case and the second case? In the first case, for every one second, five meters distance is covered by the body. So the body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time. So I told you that the speed of the body is uniform. Okay. In the second case, what I told you, the body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time. And hence the speed of the body should be what? Uh, Non-uniform. What is the third case? You see what is the shape of the graph? Yes, good, it is a straight line. Is it passing through the origin? No. Then how is it uh, passing? It is parallel to the x-axis. Which quantity is taken along the x-axis is the time. So x-axis can also be called as a time axis. And the graph is parallel to the time axis. So you see here, after one second also the body is at the same distance. After two seconds also the body is at the same distance. After five seconds also the body is at the same distance. So suppose if I stand near the board and you are all sitting on your uh, chair and from there you look at me that I am not at all changing my position. So after one second, two second, three seconds uh, till the end of the period if we both will be not moving means the distance between you and me will be the same. Am I moving or at rest? Good. I am at rest. So this type of graph where uh, the straight line uh, is parallel to the time axis uh, means that uh, the body is at rest. So it is considered to be a stationary object. Okay, did you all understand that? So like this, uh, how to study the speed that is uniform, non-uniform, rest and motion of the body is expressed in this type of graph called as a distance time graph. There is one very, very important point. What is uh, to be derived from this graph? What we are going to derive from this graph? From this graph, uh, we can... Uh, find out that we can find out the speed of the body or velocity of the body for that then one concept is called as slope of the st graph for any graph how to find the slope slope so what is the meaning of a slope of the graph i will tell you the slope of the graph is equal to 
delta y by delta x that is any change taking place along the y axis along the y axis divided by any change taking place along the x axis so this is only represented as delta y by delta x along the y axis we have taken the distance or displacement therefore delta y can also be represented as delta s and along the x axis we have represented the time axis therefore delta x can also be represented by what the delta t therefore the slope of the st graph must be equal to the changes taking place along the y axis divided by the changes taking place along the x axis or the slope of the st graph is also equal to the changes taking place in the displacement or distance divided by the changes taking place in the time intervals so we can uh, uh, express this as s2 minus s1 by t2 minus t1 that is between which two points you are going to find the slope now you take the second graph for example for example you take the second graph to find the slope of the graph we have to take any two points on the graph two points so for example you take this point so this point is a and this point is b so can you see the points a and b a and b is visible to you okay so between between uh, these two points now how to find the slope i will tell you at point a at point a what is the value of the distance uh, yes it is 5 meter so in this graph s1 s1 is equal to 5 meter and at point b at point b what is the distance traveled by the body this is equal to what 20 meter so s2 s2 is equal to what 20 meter good you have understood like that, uh, now can anyone tell me uh, what is the time interval T1 at which uh, the displacement of the body is uh, 5 meter? Yes, it is represented by the point A. So for that, what I what we have to do? Good, we have to project the point on the x-axis. That's good. So I project the point on the x-axis. So 5 meter it has covered. In how much interval of time there is? 2 seconds. Therefore, what is it? T1 must be equal to 2 seconds. Yes, you tell me now what should be the value of... Uh, uh, the time interval T2 corresponding to the point B absolutely right yes that is 5 seconds that is 5 seconds because you project the point B on the X axis good so T2 must be equal to what the 5 seconds okay so between the points which we have considered which two points we have considered A and B at A the displacement is S1 and the displacement at B is S2 okay Time interval at A is what at T1, that is 2 seconds and at B the time interval T2 is equal to 5 seconds. So the change in the displacement must be what S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1. So S2 minus S1 is called change in displacement and T2 minus T1 is called change in the intervals of time. So this is nothing but the rate of change of displacement. So rate of change of displacement is nothing but the velocity of the object. So I told you already in the case of a straight line motion, distance and displacement both are one and the same. Speed and velocity are both one and the same. So we have to understand the two concepts for the same graph. It is also called distance versus time graph or displacement versus time graph. And what is the importance? The importance of the ST graph is its slope. How to find the slope? Slope of this ST graph is equal to what? Okay. The change is taking place along the y axis divided by the changes taking place along the x axis and it is found to be the rate of change of displacement and uh, that is equal to the velocity of the object so velocity of the object can be determined from this graph now you tell me this uh, second graph i have written the values from this uh, can we find can we find the velocity come on so the slope uh, so in this case in this case the slope is equal to s2 minus s1 divided by t2 minus T1. You substitute the values. S2 minus S1 is how much? 20 minus 5. So this is equal to 20 minus 5 divided by time T2 minus T1 is what? 5 minus 2. So this is equal to 5 minus 2. And this is equal to 20 minus 5 is how much? 15 meter. So this is 15 meter divided by 5 minus 2 is how much? 3 seconds. So this is equal to what? 3 seconds and this is 15 by 3 is equal to 5 and the unit is meters per second. 
so the velocity the velocity of the body here is 5 meters per second between the intervals a and b like that if any two other intervals if you take it it will not be 5 meter per second in the second case because it is a non uniform speed or non uniform velocity have you understood yes good so today we have studied the graphical representation between the distance versus time or displacement versus time and the graph is called as st graph and the importance of the st graph is uh, the slope of the graph the slope of the graph gives what information the velocity of the object okay next we are going to study the velocity time graph uh, until then uh, have you all taken the graph shall i have? okay good now we are going to discuss the velocity time graph so velocity time graph is also represented as v t graph v versus t graph the time as usual is taken along the x axis time is in seconds and the velocity v is taken along the y axis and its unit is meter per second now first we are going to discuss uh, the first graph the shape of the graph is a straight line passing through the origin so after 1 second the velocity of the body is 5 meter per second after 2 seconds it is 10 meter per second after 3 seconds 15 4 seconds 20 5 seconds 25 meter per second so from this we find that the velocity changes by equal amounts in equal intervals of time so whenever the velocity of the body changes with time it is said to have an acceleration since the velocity of the object changes by equal amounts in equal intervals of time can you tell me what must be the acceleration of the body yes you are right it is uniform acceleration anyhow i have written already that it is uniform acceleration you can easily understand from the values okay now in the second case in the second case what is the shape of the graph it is not a straight line it is a curved line okay can it be uniform can the acceleration of the body be uniform no okay why why the acceleration cannot be uniform here yes you are right because the velocity of the chain body changes sir uh, by unequal amounts in equal intervals of time that's good so when this a body is said to have a non uniform acceleration means uh, when the velocity of the body changes uh, by unequal amounts in equal intervals of time so from the graph it is very clearly found for the second uh, body that is the uh, acceleration of the body is not uniform okay now from this graph also how to find the slope i have told you that slope of any graph is uh, found to be equal to delta y axis by delta x axis that is is the ratio of the changes taking place along the y axis uh, divided by what uh, the changes taking place along the x axis so here the slope of the vt graph uh, must be equal to what uh, this is a uh, change uh, taking place in the y axis by change taking place in the x axis and that is equal to change taking place in the velocity v that is delta v divided by changes taking place along the time axis that is delta t so between any two intervals this is equal to what v2 minus v1 v2 minus v1 so for example for example if you take uh, this point this point uh, and uh, this point okay i will uh, just project these two points these two points as a and uh, b so here v1 v1 at a initial point the velocity is what 10 meter per second so this is a 10 meter per second and at b the velocity the velocity is v2 so v2 is equal to 20 meter per second and at a the initial point the time interval t1 is equal to how much 2 seconds and at b the time interval t2 is equal to what that is equal to 4 seconds so this uh, t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 in this case t2 minus t1 is equal to what so this is change in velocity change in velocity is what v2 minus v1 20 minus 10 so this is equal to 20 minus 10 and that is equal to 10 and it is divided by 4 minus 2 so this is 4 minus 2 and that is equal to 2 so 10 by 2 10 by 2 is what 5 meters per second so that is the change in velocity divided by the change in the intervals of time and that is equal to rate of change of velocity the rate of change of velocity is nothing but the acceleration of the object so it's very simple already we have understood uh, st versus s versus t graph in a similar way now it is easy for us to understand v versus t graph also have you all understood 
ओके गुड नाउ इफ द दैट इज वेलोसिटी टाइम ग्राफ देयर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंसेस वन इंपॉर्टेंस इज द स्लोप ऑफ द ग्राफ लाइक दैट अनदर इंपॉर्टेंस इज आल्सो देयर व्हाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस द सेकंड इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द वेलोसिटी टाइम ग्राफ अदर देन द स्लोप ऑफ दिस ग्राफ इज to find the area under the velocity time graph that is very very important and interesting also the area under the velocity time graph gives uh, the displacement of the object see in competitive exams uh, some questions are asked uh, from this topic uh, how to find the area under the velocity time graph for that we have very important uh, problem we are going to solve so you look at this graph in this graph along the x axis the time t is expressed in seconds and along the y axis the velocity v is expressed in meter per second so what type of graph it is first of all yes it is a velocity time graph v versus t graph now in this uh, the body has moved uh, totally for 5 seconds for 5 seconds so its uh, velocity versus time uh, graph is uh, shown by this uh, triangle next another triangle then one small square so if you find the total area of these three closed portions uh, the total area will be equal to the total area will be equal to the displacement of the object why because velocity is equal to what the displacement by time taken so if you shift this uh, time factor to the left hand side what velocity into time that is equal to the displacement so velocity into time if you find the area means it is velocity into time you will get and that must be naturally equal to the displacement of the object okay now shall we solve the problem okay you tell me is displacement a scalar or vector displacement is a vector quantity can the displacement be positive negative as well as zero or not yes but what about the speed speed is a scalar speed is a scalar why because distance is a scalar like that velocity velocity is a vector why because displacement is a vector so when we find the displacement of the body here above the x axis the displacements are positive and below below the x axis the displacements are negative so whenever you find the area see the area of the first portion then the area of the second portion the area of the third portion we have to find out so which areas are occurring above the x axis you are right that is 1 and 3 these two areas must be added and which area is coming below the x axis is negative so that must be subtracted is it not because displacement is a vector let us find out so the total area the total area is first area 1 i will find area 1 so it is a triangle so the area 1 is equal to what half into base into height so base is how much how many seconds yes 3 seconds so half into 3 into what is the height height is how much see 0 this is 2 so this is equal to what into 2 so this 2 and 2 get cancelled and this is equal to what 3 meter the first area is the area of a triangle how to find half base into altitude so half into 3 into height is 2 so 2 and 2 get cancelled remaining is 3 meter okay like that now area 2 the second area you tell me is the, is it another triangle or not good again half base into height so this area is equal to what half into what is this base distance base of this triangle 4 minus 3 is how much 1 so this is 1 into what is its height what is its height so between 2 and 0 the height is how much 2 2 units only so this is also what the 2 units so 2 and 2 get cancelled and this is now equal to this is now equal to 1 meter okay next next one you see that the third area this is a small square so the area 3 area 3 is a square and 5 minus 4 is 1 0 to 1 is also 1 minus 0 is also 1 so the area is 1 into 1 is equal to 1 meter okay therefore the total the total that is a total area total area means uh, this is a uh, equal to area is equal to area a1 is positive area a1 is positive but uh, this area 2 is negative 
Why? Because this is minus 2 and this is 0. If you want to hear itself, you can show this as negative. If not, with substitution, you can show that as negative. So the second area, this area has to be subtracted. Therefore, the total area is what? Area A1 minus A2 and the third area is above the x-axis that is positive. So this is a plus A3. So this is equal to what? This first area is 3 meter. 3 meter minus the second area is 1 meter plus the third area is another 1 meter. So this plus 1 and minus 1 get cancelled. So what is the remaining? That is equal to 3 meter. And this only is equal to what? The displacement of the body. So this is equal to the displacement of the body. Okay, now one uh, interesting question I am asking to you. In the same tag, diagram, in the same picture, how will you find the distance travelled by the body? Is distance a scalar or vector? Good, it is a scalar. So, distance travelled can never be negative, is it not? Distance travelled can never be negative. So, in this same, in this same, how to find the distance travelled? So, the distance travelled by the body must be equal to what? You have to add all the three areas. Instead of subtracting the second area, you have to add that area also. Because distance travelled can never be negative. So, distance travelled in this picture is equal to what? 3 meter plus 1 meter plus 1 meter and that is equal to what? 5 meter. While displacement is what? 3 meter only. And the distance travelled is what? 5 meter. Can you recall the first lecture? Because distance travelled is the actual length of the path. While displacement is what? The shortest distance between the initial and final points. I hope you must have understood. Let us uh, go to the other topics now. Until then, I will erase the board.